Like Brad on that screen. Whatever. Yeah. We're talking about Red Wings. How did you get them? <laughs> did you like them? And did you go back for more? And what do you think about Big Harry Bush? Should it be trimmed? <laughs> or should you just take it like a man and dive in and plug your nose? <laughs> going to talk to Alex and Queen Anne. Jesus. Alex, you're 19. Yes. What's up, buddy? Hey, I just want to say, why do you think that everyone calls you the producer from hell and says, what a dick? Yeah. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say, man. What do you... Alex, you can sit here and you can talk about how nobody wants to hear what I have to say, but what you listen to every day is basically what I have to say. It's just out somebody else's mouth. No, no, no. Okay, Alex, tell me how the show runs then. I think, oh, well, I don't know how the show runs, but I know that you suck. Well, I, dude, okay, can you give me anything better than just you suck? Why do I suck? You, dude, you suck, man. You're a pussy. Well, so does your girlfriend, dude, but why do I suck? Your girlfriend. Okay, well, then your wife does. Oh, yeah, 19, you think I have a wife? All right, well, then your boyfriend, Alex, okay? Oh, yeah, I'm so gay, dude, not as gay as you could ever be. Okay, Alex. Nobody wants to hear what you have to say, brah. Okay, well, Alex, what do you want to hear then? Tons of listeners, I'm just going to tell you that right now. What's that? I said I can guarantee you that you're going to lose a lot of listeners. Well, good, you know what? Those are the pussies that I don't want listening, like that bitch that called up here and said... I hope that, uh, that they take him off the air and that the new programming is not going to have anything like women stuffing each other with sex toys and oh all that. God. You know what, Alex? Oh, my God. That's, that's that's there's going to be more of that on this show. There's going to be ten times more of that on this show than there has ever been before. You think so? You turn. You, I, I guarantee you, Alex, if you turn well, in to Outrageous Talk Radio, 100.7 The Buzz, The Brad Show, you will hear tons of lesbians in here. No. Stabbing each other with all types of love toys. <laughs> you, do, do you have a problem with that, Alex? Uh, well, I just don't see why you had to kick pick, kick BJ off for some bull. Dude, I didn't kick BJ well, off the air. BJ off. They, if they kicked him off for such small things, then why are they going to have you on and more lesbians stuffing each other or whatever? It's kind of ridiculous. Because BJ, when BJ did those things, he, w he went a little bit over the top. He was a little too descriptive. And I'm a little bit different the way I would do something like that. You hear me in here. Oh, whatever, man. All right, all right I got to go. My friend's freaking out. Oh, Alex is hanging up on me. That's great. Okay, thanks for calling, Alex. Jesus. Everybody thinks they're the, the critic here. Everybody can be the host. This is not easy, by the way. I am in a different position here. I'm in the hot seat, but I got to tell you, I'm loving it. D <laughs> Dude. This is my show. Well, if you can use the old crap, so can I. All right. You're right. I'm going to talk to David. David's 30, and he's in Seattle. Hey. What's up, David? I'm just calling to say I'm glad oh, I got me. rid of BJ. That, that's a crazy show. You what? I, I was tuning in to see Lycus, and I heard that BJ's finally off the air. I'm so glad. I could not stand to listen to that guy. I know. Was that just a, a three-hour live abortion every day or what? Oh, it's crazy. You know, I tune in, and it's like all day he's talking about random racks of kindness. Yeah. Finally, at the end of the show, some, like, 200-pound, 5'2 girl walks in, and then she says, I don't think I want to do it. Good Lord. I mean, how many times has that happened? Like, give me a break. Yeah, that happens every time I let BJ pick the women that come in here. Right. I mean, who wants to look at the hippo in the first place? And there, there he is, like, begging them to, to see the rack. Well, quite frankly. <laughs> that's right. It, it, for him. I get embarrassed for him. I can't listen to him anymore, you know? It gets you. Well, you won't have to, David. He's done. He's out of here, and I'm your new guy. You've got the whole bukkake thing going. I mean, it's great. <laughs> That's right. I do have the news through my bukkake-covered glasses. Right on, it, see? I mean, BJ wouldn't even know what a bukkake was. I, dude, you're exactly right. And, and the day, that, that's the kind of topic that I like to bring to the air, David. And, and, and I actually fought with, with BJ with that, uh, on that particular topic for about two hours that morning. And we finally did it because he didn't know what it was, and he told me that he didn't think Anybody in Seattle would know what it was. Right on. See, so unsophisticated. So on him. I mean, yeah. And the 
what's with the 200 pound racks? I mean, I, I can't take it. You're not going to hear it on here anymore, David. You're not going to hear any more fat bitches in this studio. Uh, and, and and how about trannies? You're not going to do that either, are you? Absolutely not. And that that is exactly where he and I kind of parted ways. I he thought it was funny. And, and in the interview, I thought, was actually pretty riveting, pretty pretty interesting with the uh, the he, she, uh, Sandra Kay that was in here on Friday. Uh, she, she, was, she was a really nice person, but, you know, the whole having her take her clothes off in here and showing the friggin' hatchet wound, I mean, that was, and that's what it was, too. It was not pretty. It was not pretty, and, uh, you know, that's one of the reasons why, why BJ's not here. He seemed a little too interested. He did, didn't he? A lot too interested, that guy. He did. He forget all the racks, you know. He he's there looking at the uh, what, what what was that phrase he used? Hatchet wound. That's wow. right. Hat, I mean, hatchet wound. Hatchet wound. There's a nice branding for you, Bradley. That's uh, you gonna start it right here, baby. Uh, Brad, Mr. Man. Hatchet anyway, wound. I, I think. You want me to take you out with a hatchet wound, David? <laughs> no, no, no. I want a, uh, I want you to take me out with a bukkake. Oh, you want? God. Okay, here. Let's hear that. Uh, there you go, David. Oh, man, come on. You can do better than that. Hold work. still and close your eyes, David. Work on the work on the sound effects, okay? All right, buddy. <laughs> Get your own sound effects. There you go. Thanks for the call, David. Right. Fred, a guy just asked you to take him out Bukaki <laughs> style, and you are more than happy to go there. <laughs> you are sick, dude. Uh, well, that's, uh, you're going to hear more of that right here on Outrageous Talk Radio 100.7 The Buzz. And uh, next, we're going to talk to Larry. Larry in Alma, Alma, Washington. How you doing there, uh, Larry? Just fine. How are you today? I'm doing great, Larry. Great. Well, I just, you know, i got to throw my two cents worth in about BJ. I thought he was really entertaining. He did cross a little bit here Friday. But, uh, did you, uh, 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 let's see, uh, Larry... Larry, I got to ask you. Very well put. Going back to what? Thank you. Going back to what happened Friday, and you you, you said that he did go over the top there. Did you want to hear what uh, the the he she's uh, hoo ha looked like? Well, not really, because they went through that I think the day before. Exactly. Went all over the phone, you know. Uh -huh. and, but it's still, you know, you guys. I've been listening to you guys, you and Top Shelf, him, you know, joking every day, and, and then everybody just like a bunch of coyotes just jump all over him, you know. And. Uh, well, you know what, Larry, you're probably right, and I do not mean it to sound like that. I, I, you, got, you, you have to forgive me. They've been nice enough to give me a shot here uh, on the buzz and to do my own show, and I, and I am probably a little too excited about that. But in no way, shape, or form do I mean to throw BJ under the bus. He's, yeah. he's been a great friend to me. I love the guy. I, you know, I'll always be there for him, but uh, th this is my shot now, Larry. Oh, yeah, I realize that, but it's just things, you know, it's a dog-eat-dog, dog, you know. And, uh, you know, he did a good job. He did, But look, listen to you today with the Red Wings, you know, that getting real close to what he was doing Friday. Yeah, but it's the way I describe it, Larry. Uh, <laughs> yeah. Huh? Uh-huh. And you got kind of horny listening to it, didn't you? Oh, no. no. You got a Red Wing story to tell us, Larry? <laughs> yeah, oh, I, I'm not a virgin with that, by any means. Really? That's right. Do tell, Larry. Tell me about your big stinky red wings. Yeah, nah. They were stinky, but I, I earned them a long time ago. You did. That's right. Good Lord. All right, well, do you love me or you hate me, Larry? You're kind of playing middle of the road here. Yeah, well, I just, uh, I liked you better when you were in the other other shoes there, but, you know. You well, where you, could, you couldn't hear me? Yeah. Thanks. Yeah. Appreciate I love, that. I love the pop show. He's just great. <laughs> Top Shelf's my boy. He's going to be my now new roommate. Now the call's going somewhere. He, he should get a shot at it. Well, God, I don't think I want a shot at it, Larry. I really don't. <laughs> <laughs> I think it was kind of a funky thing that happened to him, and and uh, everybody to go along with it like that, knowing that you know it was going to happen. But well, if if you ask me, you know the, the the company was just lying in wait, just waiting for him to make you know a mistake. Yeah, that's right. And, uh, and and he did it Friday, yeah. you know. Yeah, he's, yeah, he's kind of stepped on his Twinkie there a couple years ago, so that's, uh, it didn't help. All right, Larry and Elma, thanks for your call, buddy. Okay. Don't go anywhere. Keep listening. It's a nice Not visual. Happy. Step on his Twinkie, cream filling, and all that. <laughs> yeah. More people that hate me.
when we come back on Outrageous Talk Radio 100.7, The Buzz. Outrageous Talk Radio 100.7, The Buzz. They call Las Vegas Sin City, but soon I think I got they'll the have to call it Snow City. Because Molson is going to Vegas for the Molson oh, Snow Links Party. And you could be there for a round of golf at a world-class resort on real snow. Fly snow to keep our imported Molson cold and refreshing. We'll spend all day on the links and all night on the town. You'll be a high roller, baby, with access to the best shows and casinos on the Vegas Strip. We'll even give you some ice-cold cash to get rolling. For your chance to win a trip to the Molson Snow Links Party in Las Vegas, look for Molson displays at participating retailers between April 1st and May 15th. 2002. The Molson Snow Links Party in Las Vegas. Party through. No purchase necessary. Void or prohibited. Open to U.S. residents 21 or over. See official rules, details, and odds of winning at participating retailers. Molson USA, LLC, Golden Colorado. Golf by day, party by night at the Molson Snow Links Party in Las Vegas. Center for your chance to win a trip to the coolest event under the sun, wherever Molson products are sold. Tom Likas. See, I think the reason that women object to prostitution is because it's, it's competition. Well, is it really now? Sure it is. Most of us would would rather dispense with that dinner time conversation. In fact, we'd rather dispense with having dinner with you. Yeah, I guess I guess I can see that. I'm I'm just saying that instead it's... of having to buy you a lobster and then have to sit and listen to you blab all night long, Tom like us. We'd rather just give you that fifty bucks and then have you sit on top of us and then get the hell out. Weeknights from three to seven on one hundred point seven The Buzz. Welcome to the Wireless Phone Marathon. I'm Jim Parker along with Mary Ellen, and for the next three days, these shoppers will walk and run some 125 miles just to buy a wireless phone. That's right, Jim. This group will visit perhaps five different carrier stores before they find the right plan. And they're off. It makes you wonder why these shoppers just don't go to Car Toys. Makes you wonder. Car Toys has all the best phones and carrier plans. AT&T, Verizon, Voice Stream. With one-stop shopping, finding the right phone, the right plan, and the right price is easy. It's like a wireless superstore. What's this? The runners are very off course. And heading for that car toys. I think this group just discovered the car toys advantage. That store's going to be busy. Car toys experts can handle the load. These runners will cross the finish line in record time. You know, Mary, this broadcast is starting to sound a lot like a commercial for car toys. It sure is. <laughs> <laughs> the right phone, the right plan, the right price. Every day. Car toys, a better way to go. Call one car toys Brad, you're no longer the producer from hell. It's the Brad Show. Call now to talk to Brad at 421-1007 or toll-free 1-888-647-1007. Brad on Outrageous Talk Radio 100.7 The Buzz. Outrageous Talk Radio 100.7 The Buzz. I am Brad, and this is my show. You're going to have to work on that. What? I could see you so wanting to go down BJ's old road right there. Well, I did. <laughs> <laughs> Admittedly, I've got to tell you, it's... Uh, You're it, going to have to work hard on this, Bradless. It, it's, well, he's got it branded in my head, too. So, we'll, uh, we'll work on my branding of my show. This is my show. <laughs> <laughs> and I've got control of the sound effects. <laughs> All right, once again, we're taking calls from people that hate me. We're taking calls from people that have had red wings. We're taking calls from people like Top Shelf who don't like to go down to Stinky Bush. Oh, come on! <laughs> we're going to talk to Steve here in Kirkland. Steve, you're 23 in Kirkland. What's up, buddy? Oh, no, then I just wanted to uh, let you know my take on this whole thing. Okay. I strongly think you're one arrogant well, don't you think you have to be to, to do this job, Not Steve? Not on a day like this. Not on a day like this because BJ left, and BJ pretty much made who you are. Yeah. Uh, made you. Uh, I, I take exception to that, Steve. I, I got myself my start in radio. You, well, you were his producer. He wasn't your producer. I mean, he, he was a talk That's host. true, but he didn't give me my start. He didn't, uh, he didn't uh, develop me. I became his producer, and I've taken his show to new heights. Yes, you, you may so have. So to speak. You may have on the outside. Or depths. <laughs> people helped. People, people called in knowing you because of him, because he made you look, you know, like a fool, which was all part of the show, but he never, he never blew you up on, he never put you on blast on the radio. 
I mean, like you're doing to him now, you're being very hypocritical. Hey, Steve, he threw me under the bus every friggin' day. That's why people liked you. And then you come on here with this, this arrogant attitude about, you know... The only reason people liked me is because he beat the crap out of me live on the air every day? He made the, You guys made the show worth listening to. Give him some respect, man. Who's I, here? Mommy, bitch! Steve. Give him some respect. Steve, we're getting nowhere here, okay? I, I already t went on and said, you know what? BJ is my boy, okay? I, you're, that's where you're a hypocrite. I, I, how can I be a hypocrite? Let him die. If he's not going to be on the radio. Dude, I, they offered me this opportunity. I said, uh, was I supposed to say no? I, I, I don't want an opportunity in radio. I want to be a producer all my life. Not, but you don't put him on blast to make you look better. Well, listen, Steve. You know, BJ is a good host. Maybe not in this particular talk, you know, radio format. Oh, Maybe on. something else. I, seriously, I think he'd be great for, like, chick radio. Oh, come on. BJ was awesome. He was awesome. I think this was, dude, he was always hemming and hawing about, oh, I can't talk about this. And, oh, can I even say Bukaki on the air? You know, and, and you want to talk about ripping people off. What about him and his random racks of kindness? I tried to get him away from that and steer him completely away from that, but no. He had to ride Lycus' leg and, and steal the whole rack thing, okay? I, I handed this idea to him. I, I put it in his friggin' lap. It's called Random Clams of Kindness. <laughs> you know? You know, you had a lot of good material, but you, you, if, if it was your material that got him fired, it was your material. You should have kept him out of it. If you're the producer and you're the man that puts him, you know, in, in control and it was your stuff and you're this big man, you should have kept him out of it. You, well, might have been, you might have been trying his demise. That's what you might have been doing. Well, I don't think so, but uh, that's your opinion, Steve. A lot of people's opinion, man. Well, I don't think so, buddy. A lot of them. Take a, if you're going to be all BJ, take a lightning pole or whatever it is. All right. A bus. Thanks for the call, Oh, Slack. that was good. Well, you know what? He's you just cut him off. Rambling on and on and on. Yeah, because he's criticized. People yeah. like that, you're never going to convince that are going to... Why did BJ get fired anyways? I haven't heard... I'm sure you know. Come on, I know you know. Yeah, I'd like to, I'd like to find out why myself. Oh, God. Dude, what are you doing here? Well. I gave you the tickets to the game. Yeah, these are nice tickets to the Mariners game. Let's see. Let's see. Uh, in front of my children, my wife. I have uh, free uh, KISWRB small order of uh, uh, onion ring tickets here. <laughs> You are such an asshole. I don't I know, know how that could have happened. You, you went to the what? game cannot, today, BJ? I cannot believe what an idiot I am. What I the really hell is can't going believe on? I, 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 I can't believe it. I this is opening day. I'm a big baseball fan. You know I love baseball. So this chucklehead on Friday says, "Dude, you won't believe this. I got you tickets. It's a little surprise." You know, and the Red Sox of course played the in the, in the morning. I'm home having a great time. Of course, till they got their ass kicked. And I get a call from my buddy Frank going, dude, I feel so sorry for you. And I'm like, what do you mean you feel so sorry for me? I thought he was talking about the Red Sox. He says, man, I, I, I can't believe you got fired again. I go, what the hell are you talking about? Frank, you dumbass. And I turn on the radio, and I hear this. I hear uh, this hour of abortion. Yeah, that's a good word for it. <laughs> dude. And, uh... You said you wanted a day off. I cannot believe it. You know what? I don't mind you doing the thing Dude, on the it's, radio. It's friggin' I April. I don't mind the radio thing. I really don't because that's a cute idea. But did you have to F me with false tickets? My kids are home, for Christ's sakes, you moron. Why did you F me with the false tickets? I would have gone along with it. I kept my kids home from school and go to goddamn Ivy's. It was the only way I could... What the hell's wrong with you? It's the only way I could think of to keep you out of here. Yeah, is that really the only thing, huh? I, I actually did try to get tickets, but I couldn't get them. And you, uh, yeah, you frame, you, and you frame all the topics. You research all the work. Huh? You, they're all your ideas, every single one of them, huh? Is that the, uh, well, is that the story? I'm busting my ass because every time I give you something to do, you can't get it done. So that's the story. I'd like to say I had nothing to do with yeah. this. You know what? Seriously? Nice. This, no, I, I, I understand. This was funny. Yeah, it was, it was a riot. No, this was funny. You know how many friggin' emails I'm going to have to answer? I haven't gone on the friggin' thing. You know how many emails for your stupid little prank? I'm sure there's probably going to be hundreds now because you did this. And, and, I'm, and, and what do I get to go to Arby's? Well, your buddy Gary Bryan was on board. Yeah, was and nice. Scotty Burns was on board. So you can blame them. Nice.
I don't, I, you know, I, I, again, I don't mind the, the radio thing so much. Come on, this was funny. I'm taking my, uh, taking my freaking kids to Arby's. Nice. Dude, you know no, what? No, seriously, I'll get, I'll get your whole family tickets. Oh, uh, you're the king. You got me. I'll give it to you. You got me. You do okay. think this was funny? Oh, yeah, it was hysterical. Real big riot. Let me go out to the car now. It is pretty funny. So there are no tickets, right? Not for this game. I, I will no, get... great. Okay, no, that's fine. That's just fine. Have a good show. Dude, come on. No, 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 no BJ. Dude, great. come back. April Fool, thank you. Dude, it, it is your show. This was funny. Outrageous Talk Radio. 100.